Here we're being asked to take the cross product of two vectors u and v, <clears throat> where vector u is the vector 3, negative 2, 0, and v is the vector 1, 7, 5. And if you remember, basically what a cross product does is we'll take these two vectors and it'll find a third vector that's orthogonal to both of these two guys at the same time, which means it meets both of them at a 90 degree angle. <clears throat> now in the last video, we, we had a little formula for how to actually get the dot product, if you, um, sorry, the cross product rather. If you have two vectors u and v, then to get the cross product, you're gonna have to do a three by three determinant. And so we're assuming you know how to do some of this from previous math classes here, like take determinants, um, where the top row is always i, j, k, the second row is always the first vector, and the third row is always the second vector that you're taking the cross product of. Um, compute this determinant and you get your answer. Um, now one thing I'll, I'll mention just from experience with students in my own classes is um, whenever my students have learned about determinants in other math classes, usually they all know how to do a two by two determinant, but three by three determinants, a lot of their instructors have said, oh, well, just use a calculator if you if it's three by three or higher or something like that. Unfortunately, that'll get you in trouble here because I, J, and K are not numerical values. The other six values are, but not I, J, and K. And so most of your calculators will require that all nine entries be numbers. And so these you're forced to do it by hand. You can't just, you know, pop it in the calculator for you know for a lot of the calculators that you guys probably have so we'll but that's okay we'll, we'll do it by hand and that's that's totally fine all right so let's um let's come back here and let's let's uh, get right to it then so we'll have u cross v will be a three by three determinant we'll have standard unit vector i j and k as the top rows three, negative two, zero, and then one, seven, five. All right, the way we're going to compute this big determinant is break it down into smaller pieces. This is what's called co um, cofactor expansion or expansion by minors. Um, and basically what happens is we're gonna have uh, an ith, jth, and kth component that come out of this guy. There's i, j, and k components. And to get the coefficients for the i and the j and the k, what we're gonna do is delete the, for like for example, the ith component, the row and column that i is in. And you see I have four little terms left over. And we're gonna take that determinant of negative two, zero, seven, five, and that'll be your ith component. You're gonna do the same thing for the jth component and the kth component. For j, we're gonna delete the row and column j is in. You see I have three, zero, one, five left over. So I have three, zero, one, five. Take that determinant. And then the same thing for the kth component. You'd have three, negative two, one, uh, seven. All right, and one thing you'll also remember from taking three by three determinants is you'll also have this alternation of sign plus minus plus minus plus minus for these um, cofactor expansions. So we'll leave this sign alone. This will be a minus. This will be a plus. And if you had, you know, more terms, it would continue to alternate. But all of ours are always going to be just three terms, i, j, and k only. All right, um, most of you should remember how to do a little two by two determinant. If you have uh, a two by two determinant A, B, C, D, that determinant is A, D minus B, C. You take this product minus this product and that's all. So let's do that real quick. The ith component, you would take negative two times five, which is negative 10 minus zero times seven. So you get negative 10i. Um, for the jth component, be careful because there's this minus sign right here. But you would get 15 minus 0. 
um, which would be 15, but it would be negative 15 or minus 15 rather, minus 15j. And then for the kth component, you'd have 3 times 7, which is 21, minus negative 2. Uh, very common mistake here with the minuses and the negatives. This is actually 21 plus 2 because it's minus negative 2. So that would be plus 23k. All right, so here's your answer. This is u cross v. This is a vector, a three-dimensional vector who is orthogonal to both u and v at the same time. Now, a very good question you might have is, well, how do you know? Like, I mean, these, these are hard to visualize in three-dimensional space. Is there any way that you can guarantee that this really is orthogonal to these two guys? Well, you might remember from one of our earlier videos when we talked about dot products, you can tell if two vectors are orthogonal to one another if you can take their dot product, and if you get zero, then they're orthogonal. If you don't get zero, then they're not orthogonal. So let's let's test this out. Let's see if this actually works or not. So um, I'll try to squeeze this in the best that I can. We'll take u and we'll dot it with this new guy, u cross v that we just found. Okay, um, let's see here. We'll have three times negative 10. That'll be negative 30. And I know it's a little weird. This is in component form and this is using i, j, and k, but hopefully you're comfortable enough uh, knowing still how to take their dot product. Three times negative 10 is negative 30. Obviously we don't have an i with that because the dot product gives us a scalar. We'll have negative two times negative 15 is positive 30. So I'll have plus 30 and zero times 23 is zero. Add those up and sure enough you get zero and that proves that this vector is orthogonal to you. For time's sake I'm not going to do the same thing with v but I'd encourage you to at your desk and uh, if you do get zero then this guy is in fact orthogonal to both of these guys at the same time as a cross product should be. Um, now you, you might have some additional questions about cross products as as to well why isn't it you know some different multiple of this guy or or things like that and we're going to cover uh, some of those questions in our next video.